uh, dear students uh, this is going to be the impedance uh, i think class uh, 5 i think so so just recap a little bit first so as i said before the resistance of a resistor is called resistance but for other elements passive elements like um, capacitor and uh, inductor are called impedance because it has a phase information in it there is a phase difference between the uh, voltage uh, waveform and the current waveform the output current waveform so we have the real values mentioned in the x axis and the imaginary values which are which has the phase information in the uh, y axis and then the phase difference between these two can be denoted by this psi and this uh, length of this vector denotes the the modulus of sub z that is total impedance okay so this can be uh, calculated uh, 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 so for example at when the phase angle is zero so you will not have the imaginary component you have only the real component similarly when the phase angle is 90 so your real component will be zero and you will have the imaginary component and these are the uh, other methods by which you can express this uh, impedance Uh, in terms of complex number and this is the modulus which shows uh, the actual impedance is uh, square root of the uh, square of this uh, real impedance plus imaginary impedance this side denotes the phase angle which is tan inverse of imaginary component uh, uh, value of z which is sin and the real component and let us uh, look at the the body representation of this circuit element so if you have pure resistor since you have imaginary component zero so you can represent as all r plus 0 j okay so the phase angle will be zero uh, in this particular case because there is no uh, lag between the current and the voltage so voltage current will follow the voltage wave sum exactly so the capacitor if you have pure capacitor then you don't have the real component you have only the imaginary component so the modulus of z is 1 over omega c so the if you calculate the phase angle it will come out to be minus 5 by 2 so for inductor it is phase angle is plus 5 by 2 let us discuss about constant phase element little later and let us take this circuit this example uh, i asked you to do so the amplitude voltage amplitude is 100 and this shows the uh, omega value that is uh, frequency and this is applied across these elements and you can calculate the uh, impedance of your capacitance and total impedance and the current flowing through the circuit and uh, uh, phase angle so what you should remember is the voltage drop across the resistor is 30 volt whereas across the capacitor is 95 volts you can't simply add these two because there is a phase difference between the you know uh, impedance of uh, these two quantities so you need to do it this fashion and then you would see this turns out to be 100 volt which is the amplitude of that sine wave form so this uh, slide shows how the impedance of the nested circuit uh, can be represented suppose i have a circuit like this wherein i have a solution resistance and there is a rc circuit which represent the charge transfer process and which is in sequence with another charge transfer process for example if we are reducing oxygen into water suppose if it happens in two steps say first two electron process denoted by these two and the second two electron process denoted by these two elements okay so the impedance of this circuit is z and this one is z1 say this is uh, uh, z2 uh, and say this is uh, z3 and z4 and this can be written simplify uh, can be written like this wherein i use these two so the uh, for these two the admittance add so you combine them and pro produce another impedance c 3 comma 4 and then you write down the uh, total impedance expression for this this would turn out to be something like this okay that i have shown here so at uh, zero frequency the total impedance will be re plus r1 plus r2 because the current goes through all the three resistors because the capacitor in the circuit act like a block at infinite frequency you will have only re because all the capacitor in the circuit will act like a, a short so current will need to go through only re that means this waveform at this frequency will not disturb your charge transfer reaction that is happening at the electrode electrolyte interface uh there are many circuits uh, which look different but they are all mathematically equivalent okay 
for example this equivalent to this equivalent to this because uh, the time constant which is uh, r into c uh, which is equal to all the three circuit here so therefore you will get the same signal so in order to know which uh, circuit is a good fit for your electrical interface you need to have some prior knowledge on the system okay and let us take this uh, um, simple rc circuit the current which is flowing through this branch is i1 the current flowing through this branch is i2 so this can be represented as we discussed before like this so the total current which is coming out will be i1 plus i2 so this will be equal to this so let us uh, <coughs> so due to uh, capacitance the magnitude of the impedance will depend on the frequency because for resistor it is not for capacitor as yes, it is okay uh, so this uh, you can use matlab or some other uh, graphics software and understand how the response of this circuit would be let us take another example say here the serial combination of resistor and capacitor so the voltage waveform is like this delta e into sin omega t so the voltage drop across this will be the voltage drop across here plus the voltage drop across this element that is e1 plus e2 only the current that goes through here has to go through this so i1 will be equal to i2 i1 is the current that is flowing through resistor i2 is the current that is flowing through capacitor but both are equal so i1 equal to i2 is equal to it so and we know i1 can be represented as e1 by r same way for i2 it is c into do et by dt and so we can uh, rearrange the equation uh, something like this because we know e1 by r is nothing but e minus e2 by r okay so and then this uh, equation can be analytically solved and the solutions you can get it for uh, e2 if you have the solutions for e2 then finally you can get solutions for i1 okay so this is the expression uh, that you would get for the current so you can uh, work out yourself assuming a resistance of 1 ohm and capacitance of uh, 0.01 farad and a frequency of 10 hertz uh, which is equal to this much radians per second so you can calculate the impedance of this uh, circuit at this frequency let us take a little more realistic uh, equivalent circuit wherein you have a solution resistance along with this charge transfer resistance so here the total impedance will be the solution resistance plus the impedance that is coming out from this part okay so, so here at low frequency the impedance will be uh, that low frequency this will act like a block right uh, because uh, this will be totally charged so the, uh, the resistance will go up so the current has to travel through this high frequency this will act like a short so the current will travel through like this so high frequency will see only r1 at low frequency will see both uh, r1 and the uh, faraday resistance so it will be 20 and 120 at high and low frequency respectively so we can uh, plot the real and the imaginary impedance in this fashion taking the real one in the x axis the imaginary component in the y axis and you get a See this end is 20 ohm for the above problem on the right hand, right end which is the intercept in the x axis is 120 ohm. So at in between frequencies you get a shape like this is a semicircle. So generally uh, people uh, draw this graph and uh, they mention the certain uh, important frequencies uh, in this graph. For example this frequency which is at the top of the curve. So you take this frequency and multiply by the time constant r into c into omega that will be equal to 1. That's a characteristic frequency of a given RC circuit. Okay, so and most important, you need to have uh, 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 have this graph in square shape because, for example, if two centimeter here amounts to 20 ohm, then here also the two centimeters should amount to 20 ohms. In such fashion, you have to draw this graph. Then only you can realize the semicircle. Okay, so you can also draw it in a different fashion. You can have a frequency in the x-axis and have the modulus in the uh, y axis and the phase angle in another y axis. Uh, you can say this is minus 5. So you can see the impedance at very high frequency, the total impedance is only 20 ohm. As I said, it goes through only solution resistance. Whereas at low frequency, it has to go through solution resistance and then through the Faraday impedance, Faraday resistance. So it is 120 ohm. So in between frequency, somewhere it, 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 it suddenly transition from 120 to 120. So if you look at the phase angle flat at high frequency, 
because capacitor act like a short so the current waveform will be in sync with the voltage waveform so there is no phase difference similarly at low frequency capacitor is not playing any role because it is having a high impedance so current is not flowing through that again you have a zero phase difference but in between you have the capacitor behavior that is showing you can also plot this plot is called bode plot you can also plot the bode plot in another fashion where you can have frequency in the x axis and the imaginary part of the impedance in one of the y axis and the real part in the either y axis this is another way you can plot so uh, the, the imaginary part of the impedance which has this uh, bell shape curve very similar to the phase angle plot because uh, uh, this has a phase information right so it will, it will follow very similar to uh, so it will have initially this component will be very minimal again later stage at low frequency will be very minimal somewhere in the middle frequency it will have uh, it will go up and then decline again and let us uh, see this um, graph that is shown here so I told you that uh, in the electrical current interface you have a double layer where you have an inner mode plane and an outer mode plane and then you have a diffusion uh, layer uh, where you have the gradient of uh, concentration gradient of your reactant. Okay, so this can be represented by a impedance circuit like this. For now, you just forget about this uh, W, which is Warburg impedance. So you have only the charge transfer part and the solution part here. So if there is uh, no uh, uh, information there is no problem with the transport then uh, we can define the current that is flowing through the circuit for a given over potential by a Butler-Murray equation that is given here. So this is how the impedance measurement is performed you see this IV response of a given electrode electrolyte interface and I see I choose to do the impedance say at this uh, DC potential then I apply a superimpose uh, voltage waveform on it so the voltage will go from here to here or back to here so it will fluctuate like that. So at the time the current also will change between this value to this value okay so this is the impedance that's what we are recording so the total impedance of this circuit will be the solution resistance plus you know uh, this part which is coming from the rc parallel circuit that is a reactive part and we can uh, multiply both numerator and denominator with the complex conjugate of this term and then segregate the real term and imaginary cam then you get this uh, total impedance in the form of z dash plus j into z double dash okay so you assume certain uh, values for r c okay and r s and then uh, do this uh, calculation in your actual sheet and then you get uh, and plot the nyquist plot and you will see this nice semicircle that is forming and uh, so uh, there are a bunch of semi here so you know why so these are all done at different over potentials so as i told you in the class if i increase the over potential whether it is a reduction or oxidation process if i improve the over if i increase the over potential basically your rate of the reaction goes up because the activation energy comes down so that means this particular figure here must have been done at very high over potential compared to this one and this one would have had higher over potential compared to this one so this is the one uh, probably very close to the open circuit potential okay so the below graph shows the uh, bode plot so as i said the frequency you can plot against the phase shift so you only concentrate on these four graphs for now forget about this because this includes the warburg component so as you can see uh, the one which is more reactive that means one which can conduct more current that means the experiment uh, we, uh, that we performed at high or potential okay that we have uh, obviously a least capacitive nature there right uh, because it's more reactive the current will uh, tend to go through the resistor more than capacitor so that's why the phase angle of this is uh, lower compared to the uh, other uh, you know war potentials and let us uh, now uh, uh, recap once again so for a simple RC circuit, parallel RC, so the impedance is given like this. So the tau is a time constant, which is a product of R and C. Okay, then I can write my real and imaginary component in terms of omega and tau like this. And you can express your uh, modulus of Z in this format, which is nothing but root of R square by one plus omega square tau square. And uh, theta would be uh, the uh, ima imaginary Z with sine divided by the real c so this would be tan inverse of minus omega tau okay 
so you can see the phase angle is a function of frequency and the time constant in this uh, in this uh, uh, thing so let us look at some real life uh, scenario for example i have an electrode which is partially covered with uh, uh, say some film but uh, this does not have any uh, faraday component uh, it does not contribute any faraday component but it does contribute some capacitance for example then what will happen you will have a capacitance coming from this film and you will have a capacitance coming from the, uh, this part of the electrode which is exposed to the solution and uh, uh, charge, charge transfer part coming out from this part of the electrode and then of course you have a solution resistance so all the current that you goes through these elements has to go through this uh, solution resistance part so gamma is the part that is a fraction of the surface area that is covered then 1 minus gamma will be the fraction which is uh, left free so that means the charge transfer resistance uh, zf uh, will be inversely proportional to the quantity that is uh, uh, that is the uh, fraction of the electrode surface area which is free so when this component goes down that means fraction of area that is free is goes down then obviously zf would increase and if uh, 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 you can also write the capacitance of this uh, um, uh, kind of uh, equivalent circuit uh, by a uh, area weighted capacitance wherein the cl is a capacitance of the uh, the covered layer so which covers an area fraction of gamma and uh, cdl is the capacitance of the electrode which uh, is uh, the 1 minus gamma is a fraction of the electrode surface that is uh, not covered so this is an area weighted capacitance that you can use in the calculation let us look at another scenario suppose i have a, a porous carbon the carbon has a pore for example okay it can be a, a mesopore or a micropore okay so this is a pore that is in between so what happens in this part of the electrode probably very reactive to the say uh, charge transfer reaction and this part is only contributing capacitance then you have uh, capacitance coming from this part of the, the from the walls of these pores and you have a solution resistance the solution which is inside the pore might be very different from what is outside so you have a, a resistance that is characteristic of the solution which is filling the pore and you have a as uh, uh, this electrodes, uh, you know, the reactive electrodes, capacitance and uh, saturation that is coming to uh, picture. So, this, uh, uh, so if suppose if you apply a certain voltage uh, with respect to your reference electrode on to your working electrode, not all that voltage will go into driving the reaction at the electrode electrode interface. You remember, you recall, you know, that activation diagram that we discussed generally. Uh, when you apply a uh, potential, not all of them will go to modify the activation energy of the system, right? A part of it goes, not everything goes. So that's why we use alpha nf eta in the, uh, uh, in, uh, you know, in that uh, butler mode equation, right? So if I apply certain voltage, a part of it will fall across Re, which is I into Re. So I is a current that is flowing uh, due when you apply that voltage. So, and I into RL is the part of the voltage that drops across this and the remaining will be dropping across this electrode which actually drives the reaction. It's not the entire voltage that you give goes into driving the reaction. Okay. So, we can also have uh, uh, some other type of electrodes. For example, you have a uh, hierarchy of pores in your electrode. Say, you have a big mesopores which is above, you know, 2 nanometer in... Uh, size and then in thin that you have a say micro pore which is less than 2 nanometer in size so remember the size of this pore is in the order of uh, even smaller than the you know double layer thickness correct so then the double layer the way the ions are arranged are totally different from the bulk in bulk it is very random in double layer you have a, a particular ion uh, you know absorbing on the electrode surface and the next layer will be the opposite ion and so on so there is no electron neutrality maintained there in a given in a tiny volume there so so this so the solution characteristic here will be very different from the bulk so uh, we can have a separate resistance for this solution uh, from this uh, you know solution resistance in the bulk so you will have an uh, uh, you know rc component for this big pore because this big pore size is uh, probably is in the order of uh, uh, diffusion layer thickness right in diffusion layer what happens when the reaction is going on you have a uh, the depletion of the reactant and the production of the uh, product. 
So, the composition of the solution here will be uh, slightly different than what is in the bulk. So, the chemical potential of the solution in the bulk and in this big pore and this small pore are going to be totally different. So, is the resistance also. Okay. So, this is how we can represent. Again, when you apply voltage, we have a drop across this, across this component, across this component and the remaining only will be dropped across your, uh, dropped on the electrode surface which will drive the uh, paradigm reaction. Generally, we do not see this capacitance in our calculation because uh, the time constant of this is such that uh, it will be uh, in 10 power minus 8 uh, seconds that means about 10 power 8 hertz. So, which is in uh, something like uh, 700 megahertz. So, this kind of uh, frequency uh, capability is not there in our machine. So, generally we do not go into the frequency domain which can map this particular components. So, generally we start from 10 kilohertz to say a few millihertz. So, only this part of the circuit will be active then. Okay. So, I hope you understand. Uh, so, uh, you know why we adopt different kind of you know uh, equivalent circuit uh, that actually depends on the kind of the electrode electrode interface that you have.